Hello, and thank you for joining me. I'll be presenting today on the impacts of interactive domain installations. Uh, this presentation is done in association with the Wildlife Conservation Society, the University of Miami, and Project Dragonfly. I'm Wendy H. Bosco. So the question being investigated here was, in what ways do interactive domain installations impact guest experience and fundraising at the Bronx Zoo? Um, as you can see in these pictures, Interactive donation installations qualify as anything that rewards a guest only with an experience and not with any kind of take-home possession. At the Bronx Zoo, there's vortex wishing wells and coin peg walls. So in terms of the need for this study, uh, many major educational and conservation institutions have interactive donation installations, but their efficacy is not well known, both in terms of entertainment and earnings. So the study aims to address that. Additionally, if you can see here in this picture, many of these are actually falling into disrepair, especially those positioned outdoors. You can actually see mildew and condensation collecting in this spiral vortex. Um, so these will need to be replaced or maintained in the near future, and the decision of whether or not to do that should be based on their efficacy. So uh, down here for methods, four main types of methodology were used. Ad lib data observation occurred, um, all occurrence, of guest reactions was the predominant method of data collection. Um, there were 969 uh, guests surveyed overall. There was also a tallying of donation installations, which we'll go over later in results, but that was during the 12 hour study period. And then there were surveys and 46 surveys were done. With regards to the results, so the guest reaction results, that was the um, all occurrence data. The observed reactions were predominantly neutral, as you can see indicated by the yellow. However, um, the positive did outweigh the negative reactions by 18%. It's also worth noting that in the ad lib data collection, of the people who were um, recorded here, these were people who both donated and didn't donate. And of the people that donated, their responses were predominantly positive. In terms of the donation results, this graph indicates three different assumed levels of earnings. So every time a guest donated, that was tallied, but the coin that was being donated couldn't be seen. So this graph indicates um, the earning potentials both at penny, dime, and quarter donations. So based on this information, and based on the fact that the summer hours of the zoo are approximately 552 functional zoo hours, um, these installations do make approximately $2,000 or more each summer. Um, and that is related to the fact that they also do have the fall, winter, and spring. So they can make upwards of $3,000 annually. So um, here for the survey results, that's down at the bottom. Um, for the survey results, green indicates a positive or strongly positive uh, reaction. Yellow is neutral. And then the light and dark reds were negative reactions. So for the survey results, 63% of the surveyed guests strongly agree that these installations are entertaining. And very encouragingly, 91% of the guests that were surveyed um, agreed that these are a strong way of getting kids involved in donating to conservation. So conclusively, uh, these installations are worth their maintenance costs and their purchasing costs and they do have a positive impact on guest experience at the zoo. Um, future study would be if we could look more concretely at the actual earnings and the maintenance costs to make sure that that um, is a worthwhile expenditure for the zoo. But again, the data does indicate that these do not only pay for themselves, but contribute towards conservation. Um, down here in references, we've got several uh, discussions of the psychology of donation and the actual use of donation installations at zoos and museums. And that is this poster. Thank you for watching.